Well, good morning. <laughs> it is good to be in the house of the Lord for worship today. Uh, thank you all online for joining us today. I know there's a lot of options out there. We're glad that you chose to join us. Uh, let us know where you're watching from, and uh, if you have any prayer requests, let us know in the chat feature, and we'll include you in our prayers of the people. Uh, just a couple of announcements this morning on, let's see, is Debbie here? Nope. You, would you like to give the announcement on that one, Linda, or you want me to? I can do it. Okay. Uh, our Three C's Coffee is tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, would love to have anybody that's got that time available to come and spend an hour with us. Yeah. I think we're going to be celebrating different traditions of May Day, right? Yeah. May we uh, will have May baskets. Oh. So, and we've asked folks that if they have any particular memories or stories about what they remember as uh, in their communities that people might have done for May or any spring thing. So... We'll be interested to hear what everyone has to say. Yeah. Um, when I got here, it was the very first time I'd ever heard of May Day. I've never heard of it any other state I've ever lived in. So that's a new thing to me. <laughs> so uh, then we also, on May 21st, we have the Ministerial Association auction that we will be hosting here in our fellowship hall. Um, like the previous years, it'll be at 5.30 p.m. We'll have a Subway dinner and um, if you have donated in the past, we'd love for you to donate uh, to that auction. And if you haven't donated and have some um, good items or baskets you'd like to donate, we would be glad to receive them. So uh, get in touch with the office um, if you want to drop those off um, when the time comes a little closer. Again, that's May 21st. That's a Sunday uh, at 5.30 p.m. And today we're celebrating our seniors so a uh, special fellowship will follow our service today, so make sure and stay on after. And then um, one of my last announcements is that uh, this next Sunday on May 7th, you will uh, get the joy of having Barbara Todd lead you for worship and communion uh, in the May 7th service. So do we have any announcements from you guys? Okay, let us worship God. For the call to worship. Our good shepherd calls. He knows us each by our name. Our good shepherd leads. We are here to listen and to follow. Our good shepherd protects and provides. We give thanks and praise for our good shepherd. Join me for our opening prayer. Lord of justice and mercy, we come to you on this day seeking your healing and reconciling love. Help us to be open to your word, your presence, your compassion. Clear our hearts and of those things which block your will. Keep us focused on your enabling power so that we, having been healed, may more fully serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
call to confession. Let us confess all that distracts and distorts God's truth so that we can know grace and forgiveness through Christ. Savior God, you beckon us, but we do not heed your call. You gather us, but we wander away, losing ourselves in false and superficial comfort. You speak truth, but we fail to hear and respond. Good shepherd, do not give up on us. Redeem us, restore us, resurrect us for life in Christ. Even when we walk through the darkest of valleys, God is always with us. God never abandons us. Know that you are forgiven and receive Christ's peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us stand and share the peace of Christ with one another. All right, now's the time we're going to celebrate our seniors. So if you three want to come up, and I think Cindy has some special things for you. <laughs> Front and center. <laughs> You go ahead first, yeah. <laughs> I'll pray at the end. <laughs> I'll pray over them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I know. Is there anything you all would like to share with the congregation? Maybe your plans for... Uh, the future that you know of right now, or anything uh, like that? I plan on attending Iowa State and doing animal ecology tonight. Animal ecology, wow, okay. How about you, Riley? Uh, I'm going to construction. Construction? Okay, great, construction. Yeah, I'll be going to Iowa State for ag business. Ag business, okay, Iowa State. <laughs> More of those, all right, great. Well, I'm going to pray over you guys, okay? <coughs> Holy God, we thank you for each life here and every family represented for all the people that have poured love into each one of these young people that have walked before them the faith and as they're being sent out Lord you send us all out but these three are going to be sent out in a new way in this next year and I just ask for your protection and your blessing be upon each of them, that you would 
lead and guide them in the way that they would know your voice, that you would draw each of them closer to you through all the trials and happiness and joys of life, um, through college and through career and through relationships and all the things that they will be going through, all the new things they'll be experiencing. Uh, I pray for their families, especially the moms that are heavy-hearted, also filled with joy, that you would be with um, those parents as they uh, let go and continue to love and support in new ways. And we thank you, God, for Sam. I thank you that Sam is someone we always count on. But God has just so many fun, outrageous things for you in your future. I see lots of fun in your future. I see God using you in amazing ways to bring fun and spontaneity. It's things that you don't even think are who you are. God is going to use you in ways to just lighten people's load. And I thank you, Lord, for the leader that Sam is and the way that he engages other people and makes them feel at home. Just cause him to walk in the path that you've given him. And all the choices that are in front of him, let him just remember that all of them are of you. And he can choose any which one he'd like. And your blessing is upon it. Lord, thank you for Riley and the many ways that he stands here and a member of his family that, that he, like Cindy said, is the last one in the line. And I just pray your blessing upon him as he steps out and uses his hand and uses his knowledge and uses all of that to begin to build things, that he's a builder. Lord, that you would give him uh, relationships in his life that would build him up, that he would have positive people around him, that you would give him friends and relationships that he can uh, grow in and be challenged by, that he would... Uh, just completely blossom in this next season of his life, that he gets to explore things on his own, that he gets to explore all the new things that are around him. And I just thank you, Lord, that you give him such a keen eye of wisdom. You've given him such a gift of discernment that he just knows things that there's no way that he should know. He just knows them, and that gift is from you and help him to refine that gift and develop that gift and teach him what it's for and how to bless people with it. Lord, I thank you for Kara and all the ways that she likes to stay in the background and be such a servant. But you have called her to lead. You have called her to lead in big ways. And it's going to be a process and it's going to take turns and swirls in this way and that way and it may not go in the direction you think it's going to go but you have called her Lord and she is going to answer that call it's going to be things that she never imagined that she would do because she's always seen herself in one way begin to open her eyes to who she is begin to open her eyes to the leader that you've called her to become and that she's going to start seeing that she's kind of like uh, as she begins doing things, other people will begin following and coming alongside. She's like a gatherer of other people to, to come along and do things. And I just ask that you continue to build that gift in her and help her to see herself as you see her and build her confidence in that. And I just thank you for the peace that you've given her that passes all understanding, that special peace that just she, when she's around people, it, it just brings peace to them. That is what people will say when they say, I'm around Kara. She just brings so much peace. I feel the peace of God when I'm around her. So I thank you for that gift in her life, God. And I praise you for each and every one of these. That your kingdom come and your will be done in each of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Come back every now and then. <laughs> I was telling
telling Pastor Nicole when we joined here, I think this group of kiddos was like Anna's age. So to see them all grown up as seniors now. And Sam, you still floor me with your height and your deep voice because to, in my mind, you're a little nine-year-old like Anna. So there you go. This morning's scripture readings come from James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, and Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. When Jesus had finished saying all of this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man des deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. This is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself a man, am a man under authority with soldiers under me, I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to you, my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turned to the crowd following him and said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Join me as I pray the prayer of illumination. Loving God, thank you for this time around your word, that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to what you want to say to each of us today, that you would take the words coming out of my mouth and transform them into your living word that brings life and that cuts between soul and spirit. And that will transform and give action to each person's faith here today. And we just thank you for your peace that passes all understanding and your joy that leads and guides us forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been on this series called Made New, and today is the last week of that series. We've uh, been talking about the far-reaching effects of uh, the resurrection of Jesus um, and how that has changed our lives. Because Easter, you know, it's not just the one day. It's all through um, until Pentecost. So it'll go all the way through, um, all the way until uh, May 28th. So we'll have Easter tide season until then. Um, but the first week we learned how Christ transforms us into the people that God wants us to be, that we don't have to do it by ourselves, that the Holy Spirit within us transforms us. And then the next week, we learned about how the grace of God moves us beyond our past, that our past uh, and our sins and mistakes don't have to control us or have the last final say in our lives. And then last week, we looked at how the resurrection um, causes us to be made new and we're adopted into God's family. We all become a part of this family. And then for our final week this week, we'll look at when God makes us new, we're meant to show his love by putting our faith into action and serving this world around us. So our faith into action is what we're looking at today. Um, I was thinking about when I was around 10 or 11 or so, we'd go to visit my Uncle Joe out on his ranch. He had horses. Um, he was a rodeo man. He uh, broke horses for a living. 
He, I mean, people brought horses from all over the country for him to break their horses. And he wanted me to go riding with him. This was the first time I'd ever gone riding. I hadn't, uh, I guess I was too young. My parents wouldn't even consider it before that. So, uh, and we were not country people, so we were town people. And uh, so it was a treat to go out uh, to Uncle Joe's house. And I really wanted to get up there. Uh, but every time I'd go near the horse, you know, I'd get a little scared because uh, I'm not used to it, you know. And uh, my Uncle Joe said, can you try and trust me that you'll be okay and you won't get hurt? And so I thought, I've ridden this horse many times. That's what Uncle Joe said. He's met, ridden the horse many times, and he's a gentle giant. He's big, but he's gentle, and he will follow your lead. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll believe you, Uncle Joe. I'll give it a try. And so Uncle Joe and I have always been very close. We were very close when I was a child uh, and still have remained very close. But if anyone could have gotten me on that horse, it would have been Uncle Joe. And so I did get on the horse and I rode around the pen, you know, that it was in, in the walking. And then I got the horse to kind of trot a little bit. And Uncle Joe was right. I was safe. And the horse was very gentle and didn't harm me. But every one of us has to make a decision at some point in our lives to put our faith in something or someone, some person. And in those moments, we had to exercise confidence that the person or thing that we put our faith in was not going to harm us. Having faith in the resurrected Jesus means that we're going to trust Jesus to guide us each and every day of our lives, whether we have things that we think we need or we don't. We're trusting that he will come through on the promises that he left with us. And it means that Jesus will accomplish everything he said he would set out to do. And when we do this, we're exercising our faith. And we're made new by the power of God every time we exercise our faith. Every time we put our trust. When we're scared, but we go ahead and trust God anyway. But there's one important step that this scripture, both scriptures talk about. Uh, the one in Luke and the one in James, that faith requires action. So the first point today is true faith requires action. Now, in the story of me riding the horse, I could have said that I had faith that the horse was not going to harm me. And I could say that all day long, right? But the evidence was that I actually got up on the horse, that my action was I took action and climbed up on the horse and I started to ride. So the book of Luke offers us an incredible story of faith from a very unexpected source, right? This was uh, as Jesus is entering into the town of Capernaum. There's this Roman centurion. He is not in any way a follower of Christ. He's not a Jew. He didn't have the history of the Jewish people. He, didn't, he wasn't a follower. But he hears of the arrival of Christ and in instantly comes to find him. He heard the stories, right, of the healing power of Jesus. And at this point in time, the Romans uh, were ruling in power. Uh, the history, history says that they were ruling. And the centurion would have been part of the occupying force. So the, the Roman soldier was actually occupying the Jews at that time. So he, he was a Gentile. He had no Jewish heritage. But he still comes to Jesus out of desperation, out of this need, because his highly valued servant is sick and on the brink of death. I mean, we're not told whether he's close to him, you know, relationally, or he's just a very important part of his uh, financial uh, business or whatever. But the centurion sends the Jewish elders to Jesus, and they plead on his behalf. He didn't feel that he could come to Jesus himself because... He had heard all these stories, and he knew he was not a believer, so he felt he needed to go through the believers or the, Je the Jews um, to go to Jesus and ask for him. And just like him, we need to recognize, you know, Jesus is our only hope for healing. And we don't have to wait until we're desperate. Um, we can go immediately to the throne of grace and ask for what we need. And we can put our faith into action like the centurion did by asking him to heal us and make us new. Heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, all the different ways, um, spiritually, that healing can come. God's type of healing may not come instantly, but God does have a plan of healing for our lives. So 
Putting your life into Jesus' hands may feel like a leap of faith, especially if you can't see what's ahead, which most of us can't, right? We might get to see a tiny little step of light, but we might not even get to see that. We might be out in a big sea like that. I don't know if y'all know that song, Oceans. I love that song because you're literally out in the sea bowling and around, and you're supposed to trust God to somehow take you from one place to the other. And when you live that, I mean, it's a great song, but when you're actually living that, it's more difficult, right? <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. Uh, but we can always trust that Jesus will lead and guide us and will catch us. And the more times we do that and the more times we put our faith into action, we build up a history with God that we can always go back and say, oh, yeah, I remember when God did that and he was faithful there. And, oh, yeah, I remember when he did that. Yep. So you can start trusting by building. But if you never put, say, never put action to your faith and trust and step out, you don't have that history book to write. I once heard a story about a house that had caught fire. And in this terrible situation, there was this young boy in the house that was forced to flee to the roof for safety. And this little boy's father, he was down on the ground below, and he looked up uh, to the boy. And in order to save his life, he knew that the boy would have to jump all the way from the roof down to where the, the father was. And the father screamed out, you know, jump, I'll catch you. And all the boy could see, though, was the flames and the smoke and the blackness. He couldn't see his father. He could see the flames and the smoke and the blackness. He could hear his father's voice, and that's all he could hear. But he was afraid to leave the roof, even though, you know, the flames are everywhere. His, his life was in danger. The father kept yelling, you know, jump, I'll catch you. But the boy protested, Daddy, I can't see you. And the father replied, trust me, I can see you, and that's all that matters. I believe this is true faith, and many of us have a tendency, myself included, to trust in our own skills and our own abilities, um, our own mental acuity, and think that we can get by and do life on our own only to find out that we run out of that at some point. God makes sure we run out of road <laughs> of our own volition, and Jesus is our only hope. We have to step out in faith in some times in our lives. So second point is true faith believes that Jesus can do anything. So Jesus follows the elders. This is back to the centurion, the last part. He follows the elders back to the centurion's home to respond to the request to heal his servant. But before he can make it to the house, that's when the centurion sends the message. And he says, but say the word and my servant will be healed. So this centurion understood that all you have to do is speak. And he didn't even know that God in Genesis, all he did was speak the world into creation. He didn't know our history. He didn't know the Jewish God, you know that spoke life and life came into being. But he said, all you have to do is say the word and my servant will be healed because he understood that Jesus did not need to enter or even come into the centurion's home to perform the healing miracle. The centurion doesn't consider himself worthy of having the Savior even enter his house. But he, need, he knew that, that because he understands authority that all Jesus had to do was speak. The centurion had faith in the authority of Jesus to simply command the sickness to leave or for the servant to rise up, and it would happen. So true faith not only has, um, that, that true faith has confidence that Jesus can do anything, that there's nothing outside of the scope of his power. And I know that we talk a lot about, you know, Jesus being with us and always with us. Uh, during hard times, but I wonder how many times we think about the power of God and the miracles of God, and do we challenge ourselves to believe for those things today? I've found myself wanting to go ahead and believe for the outrageous, even if it doesn't happen. I would rather be in faith for it and enjoy that whole part of being in faith for it, even if it doesn't happen then I would just grumbling around not believing anything from God. So if we have faith that Jesus can do anything, it really does change our approach to everything. 
I'm always looking for where is God moving? What could God be doing? When our marriage begins to struggle, we can go straight to Jesus and ask him to change our relationship. Usually I begin with, could you fix Ed? And then, <laughs> and God turns back and said, let's deal with you, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's always that way. So I go ahead and start, okay, what do I need to do? <laughs> when we have addictions that continually we struggle with, we can go to Jesus and ask him to break the power of that, to give us victory over that. When we find ourselves in a place of darkness and depression, anxiety just filling us all the time, preventing us from living our life, we can go straight to Jesus and ask him to speak a word of life into us that changes everything. Do you believe that Jesus can really do anything? It doesn't mean that he always will exactly like we want it to happen, but he can and will many times. Why, why not ask? <laughs> the centurion did, and he trusted that Jesus had the authority to make the difference, and he did. Um, there's a story about an engineer, George Ferris, you may have heard this, in 1893. You may already figure out the story that he built the Ferris wheel, right? And they named that after his invention, the Ferris wheel. My favorite one, um, which I'm still too afraid to go on, <laughs> is at the Se in Seattle, uh, right on the shore. But they have the best view. You can look at it, it's beautiful, but I'm still too afraid to go up on it. <laughs> But when it was finished, um, he invited a newspaper reporter to accompany uh, for him and his wife for the inaugural ride in this Ferris wheel. It was on a windy July day, so a stiff breeze struck the wheel with great force. As it slowly began its rotation, despite the wind, the, wind, the wheel still turned flawlessly. And after one revolution, Ferris called for the machine to be stopped so that he and his wife and the reporter could step out. In braving that one revolution on the wind-blown Ferris wheel, each occupant demonstrated genuine faith. Mr. Ferris began with the scientific knowledge that he knew that the machine would work. He built it. He invented it. So he scientifically believed it would be safe. And then Mrs. Ferris and the reporter believed the machine would work on the basis of what the inventor said. But only after the ride could it be said of all three that they had this personal experiential faith because they all stepped out of the Ferris wheel. Living a life of faith means that we trust the author and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus. He created us and he set all of our lives in motion. So despite these challenges that we see in front of us, despite how hopeless it may feel at times and the wind and troubles of life, we can trust and securely rest that God has us, that Jesus is walking in front of us, alongside of us, behind us, and below us, lifting us up. So when Jesus hears the confidence that this centurion had in his power, the Bible said Jesus is amazed. <laughs> Imagine amazing Jesus, right? This Gentile centurion displays the kind of faith that amazes the Son of God. So when the men return to the centurion's home, they're shocked to find that the servant had been made well. Too bad they were shocked. <laughs> Third point, true faith joins God in serving the world. So we are called to serve. James begins by asking us this important question. What good does it do to have faith without having any kind of service or action or works accompanying it? He reminds us that faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. It doesn't mean that we do these works to get into heaven or that we do these works to get favor or, or love from God. All of that's free by grace, right? We do this out of our love of God. It's in response to God and God's love. And it's out of our faith that we join our faith by action, by stepping out. The example that's given uh, here is seeing a need around us and nothing, doing nothing to help meet that need. James would consider that kind of faith a worthless faith, a dead faith. So we would see something that we very well could meet that need and we just choose not to. So... 
It's like the kind of faith which would lead a person to take a bottle of medicine, like to take it from the medicine cabinet. I look at the instructions on it, and I'm sure these directions are correct, so I have all the confidence in the source of this medication. I know whoever wrote these directions, <laughs> that I believe everything about it, I, whatever they say, I know that this is going to relieve my headache, right, if I just take it. But then I just put the medicine bottle back on the cabinet without taking it. I mean, it's right there. It says it's going to. I, I've even taken it before, and it does relieve my headache, but I'm going to put it back up because I'm not taking the action that would actually <laughs> fix things, that would actually produce faith. So the pain continues on. They believe all about the medicine, but they still won't take it. That's dead faith. So the world around us is in need of people of full faith. I mean, they're looking for what's different about you and me. Why are you different just because you come and sit in a church building on Sundays or on Wednesdays? I mean, what makes you any different than anyone else? It's something to really think about. The Jesus people, people of Jesus that our service, the way we love one another, the way we love our neighbors, the way we are made new by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, that it's not just for our own benefit, but it's out there so we can serve those who are broken all around us, who are so hungry for the power of God, for the presence of God, to feel that peace that only God can give us. Our faith plays out in our generosity. This is a generous church. You are generous people with your time, with your finances, with your love, with your appreciation. You are people that know about generosity. Faith and works are really like the two feet of any person, you know, walking out our journey with Christ with a left foot of faith and then a right foot of works. You left foot it and right foot it and... Till the famous pastor William Booth said, they cannot be distinguished from one another, your faith and your works. They just work together. This coming week, may we keep our eyes open for opportunities to serve people around us with the full expression of our faith, with actions that we know would honor Jesus. So, sorry. <laughs> As I wrap up today, let's take some time to reflect upon the finished work of Jesus on the cross and the miracle of Easter morning. This empty tomb that's an annual reminder, that's why we spend just several weeks on it, not just one day, just to continually be in awe of the fullness of life that can be found in Christ, how we're made new, that the life of a disciple is anything but empty. It's an empowered life by the Holy Spirit that's been given to us an exciting life, and even at times it might be a dangerous one. might have to risk a, little th a few things. How can you live full of faith this coming week? How can your actions and your deeds align with your faith? How can you move beyond your past and take your rightful place at the kingdom table, not letting shame or blame or guilt mess with you anymore? That you're a child beloved of God. Is there anything that you can think of holding you back from that table, coming freely to ask God, freely to the throne of grace? If there's anything holding you back, let's take it to the feet of Jesus today. It says in Hebrews 4.16, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let's pray together. Lord, let us be moved to action. Let us not become complacent or apathetic or weary in our faith. Keep our eyes and our intentions set on you and your kingdom and your glory. For all we do this to bring you glory in Jesus' name, amen. And now our response hymn.
now time for the offering. We believe that the Christian life is the offering of ourselves to God. During the offering, we are invited to return to God a portion of God, to return to God a portion of God has provided for the ministry of the church. It is a time to express our discipleship through the giving of ourselves. Let us now receive our offering. Risen and redeeming God, you have given us more than we could ever give you in return. You meet our needs and transform us for service. Accept these gifts as tokens of our gratitude and bless Christ's ministry with these offerings. Amen. Okay, 
It is time to share our joys and concerns. Uh, as of right now, we don't have any online, but we do have Carla Pinneger, Jimmy Martin, and Debbie Snyder all watching with us. Anyone have joys and concerns? Oh boy. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Carolyn is leaving Thursday for a two-week trip to the Holy Land. So I ask it's a joy and also a concern. I'm very glad mm -hmm. she's making the trip, but very concerned about her well-being. So please keep her in your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. birth on next Saturday. <laughs> Happy and healthy delivery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, I would ask for prayers for my sister Katie. She was diagnosed with breast cancer and she has surgery on Tuesday. So prayers for her. Thank you. Lord, please please hear our prayers. Also, uh, thank you for your prayers for my friend Jack. Um, unfortunately, he did uh, pass away on, uh, as actually on, on Good Friday. He had passed away. And, yeah, please be with uh, prayers for his wife, Connie, and her, her, his three daughters and their families. So his visitation will be this week now. So thank you again for all these prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I just want to thank all of you for praying over our seniors today. Um, and I would like to thank the parents of those seniors because it's been a great ride. And I uh, couldn't do it without you guys, seriously, as you know. Um, confided in each other through all of these long 18 years. So uh, thanks to all of you for all of <laughs> helping raise these kids. So. <laughs> Um, I also would like to ask everybody to pray for Hannah, who has um, decided to go on a mission trip herself this summer. She and uh, some of her college friends have signed up to go uh, to Freedom. Uh, it's a Christian English Immersion School in the Dominican Republic, and they'll be serving there for 10 days, um, helping build the schools there, helping teach the kids English, and working um, through their Spanish English uh, classes and leadership, etc. So. Super proud of her. She did not sign up at first. Um, gave her a little nudge. Um, told her we'd figure out the financial piece of it, uh, and she's decided to go. So um, just ask that you all keep her in her prayers. She leaves in June um, and is gone for 10 days. So I'm sure I'll ask again, but thank you. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Uh, the joy is, I assume that the seniors have gotten the beautiful clock from Melvin, and we thank him for his creativity and for all these years of giving seniors clocks. I also would ask for prayers for the Fox family. Kay passed away this last week. She worked at the manor for years. And prayers for Carl's niece, Annette, who is recovering from brain surgery this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, I do have a concern to share. My coworker, Tanya, her daughter and son-in-law had a little girl this week born five weeks early due to some complications, and she passed away two days later. I know in talking to Tanya, it was a long road to get to have this baby, um, and she is really struggling with her faith this week with that outcome. So prayers to Tanya and her family. And then a joy, my grandma turns 90 on Cinco de Mayo, and we're having a family dinner to celebrate. So I'll end with that. Lord, in, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayers. prayers.
Join me as I pray. Shepherd God, who gathers us for worship and prayer, who sustains us with the breath of life, who quenches our thirst with calm and holy waters, hear our prayers for those in need. Grant relief to the suffering. Have mercy on the oppressed. Heal the sick. Raise up those who have been beaten down. Feed the hungry among us. Humble the proud and return the lost. Release the captives. Revive those who are exhausted and weak. Calm those who are anxious. Comfort those who live in fear. Redeem our violent, warring world. Grant us all peace. Ground us in your good news, O God. And help us hold on to your promises of hope. Keep our feet steady on Christ's path as we seek to be his faithful followers, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> and before uh, I give you your charge and benediction today, um, if you haven't read your newsletter or you haven't, uh, it hadn't gotten around town to you yet, <laughs> um, my husband Ed has um, accepted a call uh, from a large church there in Peoria. Illinois, and we are going to be moving there. And my, we've decided, uh, session and personnel and I have decided my last Sunday here will be May 21st. And so this is the first announcement of that, uh, first announcement for the congregational meeting that'll happen after service on May 21st to dissolve the relationship between you and I. And it's very bittersweet. I'm uh, very proud of my husband. At the same time, I'm very sad um, to leave here. So um, please, uh, anytime you'd like to come by and say hello or make an appointment or I can come out to your house or whatever, um, I'm available for that. Um, you'll go through many different phases of uh, worry and uh, what's next. Um, but uh, there are those of us, the session and myself, that uh, please feel free to call on us during this time. Uh, so with that, please stand for your benediction. We stand in awe of our amazing God. We live guided by our good shepherd. We are commissioned for service by the breath of the Holy Spirit. We are a blessed people, so let us go and be a blessing to others. May the grace, hope, peace, and the love of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with us all, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you.